All right, guys, welcome to our first official Chalk Talk. What we're going to be doing here, we're going to have a little bit of fun. we got Coach Hahn, who you guys know all about. We also brought in Sam, talked about him plenty on the podcast recently. As I mentioned, um, you definitely want to follow him, as well as Coach Hahn on Twitter. They do a really good job um, kind of looking at these things and breaking down, especially the Green Bay Packers. But what we're going to do today is, um, and, and Coach Hahn will probably do a better job of, of explaining as we go along, because this is my first time doing this as well as Sam's first time doing this, but um, we're going to have these guys take control of the team. One has offense, one has defense. They're going to essentially come up with a play design, and then we're going to reveal those play designs, and then we're going to decide based on that who ends up winning sort of that, that war or whatever. If there's some kind of a, a tie that takes place, I'm going to be the tiebreaker. I'm not qualified for that, but I'm going to do it anyways because it's going to be fun. But I think it'll just be a fun little exercise for all of us, and um, especially for the lay people like me, just to be able to get sort of a behind-the-scenes look of the thought process that goes into what they're doing, why they're doing, what they're doing, and then kind of the, the failures and successes of that. So with that being said, guys, if, if you want to kind of get into this, uh, let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Rad, absolutely will. Um, so again, Coach Hahn here. Um, I'll be taking control of the offense. Um, Sam will be taking control of the Packers defense. Again, um, like Ryan said, he is a quality follow on Twitter. Um, he's much more adept at, at defense than I am. So I'm, I'm excited to see how he does this. And some of the parameters that we're going to use in this chalk war, we'll do about two drives worth of plays um, just to get kind of a feel for the way that offense and defense is called live in a game. So offensively, I will give uh, the personnel set to Sam because that's something that can always be relayed from the booth. So I'll give a personnel set and then any motions um, that I'll be doing pre-snap. And then um, Sam can tell how he would adjust to that, uh, that sort of stuff. And then we'll simulate a snap and um, write down usually, you know, write down what my play call is and the things I'm looking for and the things Sam's looking for. And we can kind of, kind of banter back and forth and see how all of that works. Again, um, competitive as we both are, I know Sam and I are probably very competitive. Um, <laughs> that's not really the point of this. It's just to kind of give all of you an inside look at kind of what goes on in there. So we are using Packers only schemes. We are using Packers only personnel. Sam, you ready to do this, buddy? Yeah, let's get it started. All right. Um, first play, I'm coming out. Let's say it's first and 10 from the 25. We just had kickoff. Packers got the ball, whatever. I'm going to come out in 11 personnel. Um, I'm going to have Mercedes Lewis here, 89, as my tight end, not DeGuara. Um, we're going to come out in 11 personnel set, and I'm going to be in a deuce on look like this with Tay off of the ball at that Z receiver spot. How do you want to align, buddy? Okay, so I think... I think I'm going to stick in base um, just because I don't, do you want me to go ahead and explain my reasoning now or wait until yeah, after? We run absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to stick in base um, just because Mercedes is basically an extra lineman. And so I want to guard against the run because I know the Packers, they probably want to start out with um, a run or an easy uh, short pass. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Um, yeah, and I think I've got my play call ready, uh, if you are ready as well. Very good. Um, and then obviously at any time, you know, because uh, we're screen sharing off of my huddle account here. So at any time, if you want any alignments changed or any leverages changed, um, right now I've got you about five by one inside on the corners, too high look off of end man online. Um, essentially your, your reduced down look to the tight end with your will backer. I've got you in a base personnel, not a nickel. Um, and if at any point in time you want to change nickel, dime quarters, anything like that, um, sure. just let me know. I am not going to go in motion on this play. I just kind of want to see how you're going to align to a semi-balanced formation. Um, and then from there, I got my play call ready, ready as well, excuse me. So um, let's go ahead and, and show them, and I'll, I'll show you what I got kind of queued up here, all right? Sounds good. All right, so – my play call here, play number one, I'm going to manslide the line. We're actually not going to run it. We're going to do something the Packers don't do a ton, um, but they do love to do it. Uh, unfortunately for the Lions, they love to do it against the Lions, um, where they're going to take that first down shot. So what we're going to have here is manslide to the strong side. My guess is um, the Packers really, uh, just from what I've seen as far as um, a little bit of film study goes, they like to come out in quarters, the first play of the game, quarters coverage. Um, so we're going to manslide it to the tight end side. 
And we're going to run a little drought play over here, which is a drive out. So we're going to send Mercedes to the flat. We're going to get Lazard here running the drive route. Um, this is over here, our, our cover three beater. This is our check down play in case anything goofy happens with these safeties. Because we're going to take this shot knowing that they have a propensity to run quarters coverage or like a cover four pattern match type of thing. So we're going to run the post by MVS. And we're really looking for the dig here on the backside of it by Devante. Knowing the corners rules are going to be, if it is quarters, if we did luck out, um, the corners rules are going to be five by one inside leverage. And he's got all of man number one if he goes vertical or past that hard deck, that five yard um, hard deck. And then this Hawk safety has to um, respect the post from MVS. So there should be a real, hopefully a real nice little window here as Devante breaks inside of that corner. There should be a nice little window right in here as this Hawk bails up on top of this. And if it is true quarters, that means the safety is going to have to drive down on the drive route and the corner is going to sit here. Um, so we're looking to hit that window right away um, and get the ball in our best player's hands right off the bat. Sam, what you got for me coverage-wise and blitz-wise? Yeah, so I called uh, cover three buzz week. And so i um, going to have the uh, F safety go into the post. Yep, and you're going to spin this thing like this, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Like I said, I was kind of looking for a run or a short pass, um, but shot yeah. play is definitely something you have to guard against with the Packers because they're, they're a really hard team to, like, I kind of put together a little bit of a rudimentary call sheet. They're a really hard team to game plan against because they can really run anything out of any package anywhere on the field. Um, yeah, they're so, good at that. Yeah, yeah. And so the post safety should have, obviously, that post route. Um, the uh, spinning safety, the H safety. Uh, do you call that the H safety? Or? Yeah, we, we traditionally call it the Hawk. Gotcha. Um, so my guess is, Sam, you're going to be with no flat threat here from that Hawk safety now. Uh, my guess is he's going to be sitting right in that low hole, and you'll yeah. have this buck backer sitting right here in this little snag window here. Um, so this is what I was hoping you wouldn't do um, because that takes our shot away, right? Mm -hmm. That is now a robber safety you, you have. You plus one us here. Um, so this is the point where, you know, if it is Rodgers, he's keying this safety, just looking for any rotation. But this right. is exactly why, you know, Green Bay or, or most teams have to put this on the back side. This is your check down side, you know, mm -hmm. because your corner is going to stay on top of that drag route. Now you got to yeah. check down to Mercedes. You know, if, if you get the catch, it's two or three yards. You know, it's not going to be anything special. Mm -hmm. But that buzz three stuff, um, anytime you're spinning safeties like that, that's a really good defensive play call. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I really thought I had you off the bat. I thought I had a big play to Devontae thinking you were going quarters. Um, but this is why they do it, right? So, yeah. Yeah, well, quarters, yeah, like you said, quarters is a good bet with the package defense. They like to run that a lot. Well, um, Sam and Ryan, I'm going to concede defeat on this play. I'm going to say that we probably just ended up throwing this one wide of, of – uh, Mercedes here, and I don't think even if we get the completion, it's not anything. So let's say it's second and long. Let's go with second and 10 on that. Great okay. job, buddy. You took me yeah. right off the bat. I was hoping that <laughs> wouldn't happen, but well done. So I, yeah. I just want to pause real quick because, you know, th this is why doing this stuff is so much fun because from a fan perspective, just watching this first play of the game, most people, myself included, we came into this saying, okay, Packers are a dominant football team. The Vikings are depleted. They got nobody out there. We're going to try to take a shot, like Brian said, and they're not able to do it. And the thought process from a fan is you can't throw against this defense what's wrong with you. When really it comes, you know, we listened to your thought process, Brian. It made, everything made sense. Everything was great. Yeah, let's take a shot. It was just the perfect call against that offense so that the thing we wanted to do, because we didn't think you would be planning for that, we're just not able to do it. And like you said, now we got to check down and we get two yards. And it's just, it's one, it, it doesn't mean we're going to lose. It doesn't mean we're not going to call a better play next time. It just means, shoot, they, they, they caught us on that one. We'll get them next time. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Exactly right. Now that I know Sam's propensity and, and, um, right. And that's know, the other thing, adjustments. His ability to, you know, run some, some cover three and some spinner buzz and stuff like that. Now I'm not afraid, all that afraid to call if we got to get to a four verts concept some point in time when he does have two high safeties knowing, hey, if he does spin them, you know, we've got a home run. So right. um, that's a great call, man. That's, <laughs> that's very well done. Let's go Thank to uh, second and long now here. I'm going to stay in 11 personnel. I'm going to go deuce on. Um, so kind of the same look here, except we are going to widen MVS out. 
um, we're going to do everything we can to keep Tay in the slot. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more um, after the, the play call here. But we're going to start here. We're going to actually put Aaron Jones here in the pistol now. But the same personnel setting. Um, so fans know usually the reason offenses want to stay in the same personnel settings is so they don't have to sub. Um, because if you sub, then obviously the defense has a chance to sub. So I'm going to go not a ton of tempo, but I'm going to keep the same guys on the field, knowing I've got Sam in, in base here, um, where he's not in nickel and not in dime. Um, and then if he does sub, we have the chance to get, you know, 12 on the field and, and right. you know, Green Bay <laughs> does so well there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like you said, I'm probably going to have to keep the same personnel on the field. Um, I will, I, I will let you know, I am going to end up motioning here. Okay. So we're going to start here and we're going to go ahead and bring Lazard into the near slot here. Um, just a lazy jet motion. We're not going to try to draw you off, but I do want to see how you're going to adjust to a nubs set with a tight end and then a three by one um, for some play calls we'll have coming up later. So um, yeah. go ahead and let me know how you'll adjust to that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just wrote, just motion over my entire defense. So I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to motion a corner along with a Lazard. So I'm just going to get the corner on. And then the, you're going to uh, do what, end. Yep. You're going to do what's called bump. Then you're going to go mm -hmm. ahead and bump your yep. backers into what's called boss. Correct. Yeah. Keep that will head up on the tight end and stack the corner. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now you're going to play number two and then you're going to keep your post safety right there. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty common adjustment with bump. Um, so the fans know too, this is something we're definitely looking at um, when it comes to offensive play calling, because this tells us it's likely going to be some sort of zone um, that's coming up. If that corner does run across yeah. the field and get into what's called a Cobra set, um, that's a good indicator that it could be man coverage or um, something like that. Um, another thing we look for when the offense, or excuse me, when the defense does bump with our motion is how many they have over our three by one. So we can see here, We've got four over three right now, um, which gives us an advantage in the box numbers wise. Uh, we technically have a five man box. I know the corner can fold in, but he's got to hold the edge. The safety and the Sam can fold in late, but I'm going to do what the Packers do all the time. Um, and they love it. I got my play call ready here, Sam. Um, okay. I'm going to do what the Packers do all the time that they absolutely love doing. And that's just play with the box count, knowing we have four over three. Um, we're going to go ahead and run duo week where we are going to just, it's very similar to inside zone, except we're looking for every double team that we can get. Um, right. We're going to go ahead and double this nose up to the mic, knowing that that mic is probably your play side a gap player. Now um, understanding your run fits here. And we're going to just absolutely hammer that end and then make that will. We're going to push all the unblocked players out to that will. And then we're going to let Aaron Jones come off and then tuck that thing as tight to the a gap as he can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the benefit the benefit with that call is if he chooses to bounce it outside, um, I guess to the running strength, um, weak side, uh, passing weakness, he basically just has to beat a corner um, on that end. So I called uh, quarters coverage because I want to basically bracket Devontae in the slot. Um, mm -hmm. Just thinking passing, you know, on second and long, I'm okay if we give up four or five yards to a run or a short pass, but I want to basically keep Devonte in check. Um, so that's a tough, that's a tough call with duo, especially with my guys out of the box. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think you're dead on there. I think you're conceding your four or five yards on it. Um, getting to a third down situation. I think that's probably what, you know, basically what ends up happening here. We will move that nose off the ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, the mic is probably the one who makes the play at that four or five yard mark. So this yeah. is one where the offense is happy. And, and to be honest with you, the defense is happy as well. Um, knowing that we got the box count we wanted, set us up for a third and manageable. Um, you didn't get taken that you didn't get the top taken off anything like that. So right. um, I would, I would, I would uh, concur. I would say this is probably a third and five type of setup. Yeah. Yeah. All That's right. Good. So let me just pause here for one yeah, second. Ahead, is, is B Rashawn Gary? Um, Go ahead. He would normally be Preston. Um, usually they align, they pretty much keep their edges um, right and left rather than lining strong and weak. And so Rashawn okay. is usually, he's the, I guess, what would here be the weak side 
outside linebacker, and then uh, Preston would be the B outside lim- uh, linebacker. I guess Buck would be your terminology, Brian? Yeah, yeah, we use Buck terminology on that, and um, Sam, I don't want to speak for you, but usually, Rye, what they're looking at here, you're not looking to cover Devontae Adams really right. with, right. with uh, um, any of those guys. What you're looking to do is stem him to that safety. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. So, yeah, I, I figured it wouldn't be man coverage, but I know I, as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw him get bumped out to Devontae, my heart sank. So I'm just thinking <laughs> you better have a good play call for yeah. this. Because this, if if Devonte gets for a twenty yard reception here, you're you're gonna get crucified. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and that's kind of the thought process in staying in the same personnel set is to not have him come off the field in favor yeah. of Chandon Sullivan or, or whoever your nickel is gonna be. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good point, yeah. Ryan. What you're looking to do is slow Devonte off the line so that the safety can get a better read. So, is there any thought, Brian, from your standpoint of we should try to attack that, or is in your mind you're saying it, he's not in coverage, he's just gonna take up that zone? we're still going to have a hard time with the numbers. Let's just run our run play here. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're going to take a look at four over three, knowing yeah. that the extra defender is going to be over Devante. Okay. Um, and that's something I'm making a note of right now is like, Hey, they're going to bracket Devante. How can we take advantage of that numbers wise Sure. Um, for a later play call? But this is a good call by, you know, it's a good call by Sam, give up those four or five yards, um, get yourself to a third down and make the Packers execute, you know, early in the game. So um, you're not looking at any sort of one-on-one, if anything. He's right. What he's really doing here is looking to eat up a bubble by Lazard. You know, he's looking to eat up a little snag route here by MVS or something like that. He's not really looking to go toe-to-toe with Devontae. Right, yeah. got it. And, and one thing I could have done if I was a little bit worried about, you know, Preston being on Devontae is I could have called cover three buzz again, where I basically bring the Hawk safety down over Devontae. Still not a very great matchup, but it's better than a linebacker on a wide receiver. But in this situation, I prefer to keep two basically on Devontae and try to just bracket him. Correct. I, I completely agree with that. I think you played this, you know, the right way. I think quarters was the right call in that situation as well, or, you know, it's certainly an acceptable call there as well. So given the personnel, but now, now I am going to change personnel. We got third and five here. I got to figure something out. We know we can run the ball a little bit when we get a favorable box count, but I don't know that we want to just sell out to the run game as much as it pains me to say that as an offensive line coach. Um, we do have the best quarterback in the history of the league. So <laughs> let's see what we can do here. Sam yeah, and Brian, get, uh, uh, before you uh, move on, do you want me to write down my calls? I just don't want to like give the impression that I'm calling after the fact or anything. Not at all, man. Not okay. at all. Um, okay. I, I mean, Anybody who's taken even the briefest look at your Twitter knows that you know exactly what you're talking about. And again, it's not a hyper competitive thing or anything. So <laughs> sure. You yeah, just no keep problem. walking us through, man. You're doing a great job. Sounds good. So we're going to get to 20 personnel now. Um, we're going to take our tight end off the field. We're going to put um, AJ Dillon back in line with Aaron Jones. I want to see how Sam is going to deal with a, a stacked box. Uh, or excuse me, a, a little bit more loaded box in the backfield as well. See if we can bait him into something and get a matchup we want. Um, that would be a, a pre-snap look for us. Um, otherwise, if we get a box count that we really like with with thunder and lightning in the backfield um, on third and five, we'll roll the dice and, and take a look yeah. at that. So, um, Sam, this is going to be my formation here. Um, we're going to have just a, a standard doubles out of 20 personnel. Again, keeping Devontae off the line. Um, inside in that slot position so that if you do get to a nickel look or something like that, Devontae is going usually against the nickel and zone coverage, and we're going to try to keep him away from your number one corner who, if he was healthy, my guess would be Jair. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go into nickel personnel now um, since I know it's a passing down. Yep. And for the front, I'm going to go um, – with an over front. So basically the nose tackle is shaded weak side of the center. Oh, and I'm setting the back to, or I'm setting the front to AJ Dillon. So okay. he's, yeah. Um, okay. The nose would be actually in the opposite A gap gotcha. from what you have him there. Gotcha. Then, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm putting three tech, obviously opposites. Um, and you're drilling AJ. down your will, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm okay. going to go with the two linebacker set. Um, okay. I think I have my call here. Very good. Um, I, I have my call as well. You've done a pretty nice job of, of closing that door. Obviously, we have 
six to block your six. Um, we could do, you know, a little bit of read stuff if, if we really needed to. But my, my whole call on this, what I really like doing on this is seeing how you're going to react to post snap movement. So we're going to go ahead and orbit post snap. Um, we're going to orbit AJ, or excuse me, Aaron Jones. Um, in my opinion, a little bit better receiving back. And we're going to go ahead and crush a little bit of wide zone here with the call to A.J. Dillon. And as Dillon comes through on the mesh with Rodgers, Rodgers is going to read this end. Knowing that we have two on three here, um, but also understanding that we need five yards, um, we're going to go ahead and read this end. We're not going to let Rodgers run with a disconnect. However, if this end is crashing down hard and we think he can actually tackle A.J. Dillon here, um, we're just going to stop and throw the swing to Aaron Jones. So we'll block here to here, let Aaron Jones get to the outside in space um, on the swing pass, see if we can get those five yards stolen from a Hawk who now has to banana out. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a tough tackle one-on-one. -on -one. If that end is going to go ahead and stay put and really play C-gap responsible, um, knowing that that nickel is probably not coming off of our best player, um, then we'll go ahead and give it to, to A.J. Dillon because now we're a little more favorable here, five on five blocking, and we'll see if we can rumble for five yards. Um, Sam, what do you got for me, buddy? Yeah, so I called cover one double 17. So basically it's man coverage with a single high safety, and then the other safety is doubling Devontae. Like so you said, that's kind of – here, yeah. Yep, and I'm going to have him do it from depth. So basically the nickel and the safety are playing kind of two different – areas of field if that makes sense Absolutely. um so the nickel's probably going to play it's probably going to play outside leverage closer to the line and then the hawk safety is going to play inside leverage um with depth so he can kind of come down on any in-breaking routes from Devonte. um so with it being man coverage uh probably my sam backer is going to motion out with um aaron jones and so that probably means that uh, Rogers is going to hand the ball off to AJ Dillon this time. Um, right. And I don't, I don't know. That's why I actually, it's uh, <clears throat> why I aligned my front to AJ Dillon. Um, so I put the three tech in a good position to play the inside zone. Yeah. Um, and one thing with this is they've actually, they're not, they don't just run this RPO. Um, they also run actual routes with the outside receivers. Um, so that's why I kind of wanted to bracket Devante because Pretty much on the passing down, I'm okay with the one-on-one -on -one matchups with the other receivers. I just want to stop Devonte if that's even possible at this point. No, um, that's I, I think that's a great call. One of the things we really like um, about this is knowing that your Sam is going to be, you know, what, the second that we see any inside leverage here, or if I see an outside leverage by a nickel and a safety over the top, it's usually a pretty good clue that it's going to be cover one. Um, so now we can bump the read. You know, so instead of just playing your C-gap defender here for the read, it's real easy for somebody as smart as Rodgers to just bump the read. And if that Sam Backer flies out, you know you have a real light box count now. Um, yeah. Snap. So he's definitely going to hand that ball off. This end is still a little bit worrisome. You know, he could rip around the backside of that tackle knowing that he's the unblocked defender. But knowing that wide zone is really trying to hit kind of the play side hip of the center – um, hopefully the path for Dylan is a little bit better and we can get up a little chip to help on the, the three tech here. I have him as an end. He's actually a tackle. Um, mm. A little chip to help on that. Should he try to cross face on any of that base block stuff? You know, some of that read stuff from the D line. Um, but then your center is getting right up to the mic with hopefully a pretty clear path. So yeah, close one. This is really mm. well done here. Um, bracketing K um, making sure if this, if this ball does get complete and you can get MVS with that one block on the corner, though, that is a real hard line for that safety who's got to play inside leverage of Devontae to come through. And then knowing that this Sam is going to have to wade through a bunch of crap here, you know, it's pretty easy to lose some angles there if that ball does get thrown. But I think you baited it into being handed off pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, this is a, this is a pretty good draw because I don't know, AJ Dillon against a light front. That might be, that might be a first down. Do I get to play now? Yeah, it's your turn, Ryan. Yeah, what do we got? You heard our, you right. heard both our arguments here. How does this play shake out? I think five yards is tough to pick up on the ground, but like you said, um, first of all, it's a light box. Second of all, we're talking about E flying off the end and maybe making a play, but I believe we're talking about what, Dean Lowry maybe, something like that? 
Kingsley Kiki-ish? Uh, in this case, it would probably be Preston, um, just because in nickel, usually they get okay. their two outside gotcha. linebackers on the edge. And then um, I would probably put Kenny Clark at the nose tackle, so he's the backside one technique. And then um, for the three technique, probably Dean Lowry. He's been a pretty decent pass rusher, and so, yeah, he's probably out there. I got you. We kept the the letters the same, so I just assumed the player was the same, but I got sure. you. I think either way, no disrespect to uh, Devondre Campbell, but I, I think he's got a pretty good chance. I think it'll be about if he gets anything five yards, but I think just based on, like you said, as soon as, soon as we mentioned the numbers advantage just swung to our in our favor, and I think uh, um, A.J. Dillon's good for three yards once he gets contact, I think he, I think he probably got about five yards on that. Yeah. My only counter argument would be that you've got Lucas Patrick basically on Devondre Campbell, and that's <laughs> that, a matchup. I that think is, Campbell probably wins. <laughs> the, the contact probably could have been at one yard, in which case he doesn't get it. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know how exactly to simulate that, but I'm just going in, in favor of the numbers here is all yeah, I'm, I'm looking sure. at. That makes so. sense. No, it's a solid point, and this is a whole different ball game if I got Billy Turner at right tackle and David Bakhtiari at left tackle, of course. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Rad. So, Sam, I'm going to switch it up personnel-wise on you again. Um, just kind of a heads up here. Let's just say, for fun's sake, we did pick up a first down. We don't have sure. to uh, um, go forever on this. We're just kind of giving some ideas. But I am going to switch it up now to 10 personnel. Um, okay. Just giving you that idea. And then I'm going to get into a trips set here. We're going to go trips right. Um, so here we go. And my 10th will be EQ. Um, or my, my other receiver will be EQ. Let's just say if we did get it, we went ahead and we're a little closer to left hash here. So we're going to get some nice spacing out here with these guys. Again, keeping, uh, keeping Adams in that slot position. If we can go ahead and, um, oh, and we'll say in pistol here to give it kind of an even look in the backfield. Go ahead sure. and let me know in 10 personnel, um, first in 10, how you would go ahead and set this sucker up. Yeah. So I'm actually going to stay in nickel. Um, because I'd want to guard against that run on first down. Um, and, yeah, I think I have my call ready. Right on. So we're going to go ahead and my guess is you're going to apex one and two, um, unless you're going to show a bracket, which means you're going to be probably five by one inside here and here and keep that post safety. Is that correct? Um, I'm going to probably line the hawk up a little more neutrally before the snap. Um, okay. Yeah, just keep him kind of – yeah, keep it like that, I think. Very good. Try to disguise it a little bit. All right. And um, you did say you had your call ready? Yep. Knowing that we have this sucker um, closer to the left hash, and I know um, hashes aren't as important in the NFL, but they, they do still have a little bit of importance here. What we're going to do is um, get – oh, is we're going to go ahead and get Rodgers on the move a little bit. Um, you kind of alluded to it already, Sam. Um, the fact that – we do have quite a few backup offensive linemen, so I don't want to be sitting back yeah. um, a ton in any pass pro, especially against um, Joe Barry's propensity to, you know, at times go a little bit gap on sound if, if he smells um, anything funny coming out. So we're going to get into a, a, just a real simple roll flood concept here. Um, just a little flood switch, if you will. We're going to have MVS take that deep out. We're going to go ahead and let Tay attack on that speed out, and then we're going to bubble EQ with a backside, what we call a COL or a come open late. If this safety does fly down to try to attack that flat, um, if you have any sort of spinner coverage on, we got that backside hole. But we are definitely looking for Devontae here. Yeah. Okay, so what I called was uh, quarters. So the adjustment, the quarters adjustment for three by one is called stubby, where basically the cor outside corner is man to man on that outside receiver. He's going to stay um, on top of the route, correct? Yep, yep. And then the nickel, I believe, if I'm remember, remembering the rules right, he has the receiver out or deep. Correct. So he's going to try to take Devontae. So he's probably going to line up with outside leverage. Um, but one thing I did do is um, I call a little bit of a special type of stubby coverage where I'm poaching the backside safety to the front side. Um, so the backside corner is one-on-one -on -one as well. But the, on top of this route. Yeah, yeah. And so the, yeah. the both safeties are kind of lean, lean over to the three by or the three receiver side. That way, the Hawk safety, it, it's kind of like a double team. It's like a bracket, but not really, where he can play 
over top of the number two receiver. And then um, the backside safety can also come over and help on the number three receiver or, you know, whatever passing patterns on that side. Should it be, yeah, should it be, should it be a vertical stretch from this inside receiver EQ? Um, if I understand the stubby rules correctly, you're going to treat this as your number one uh, receiver and this is your number two receiver if you're that free. So he has all of number two deep if mm -hmm. 19 here were to run a seam. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and, pro and the sandbacker is probably going to try to um, bump over with that formation and wall number three inside, and then yep. he's going to take any underneath routes from the three receiver side. Agreed. Um, so, yeah, what we're really looking to do here, um, Ryan, is we're, we're kind of looking to high-low this nickel um, and put him in a bit of conflict, understanding we, we really kind of have two flat attacks here, especially with, um, as Sam was saying, uh, quarters coverage. It is a little bit lean in the flats. And it's intentionally so. Um, the thought on that is rally to the flat. Yeah. Uh, is, is you can get that hawk now when he doesn't have work from the number two receiver vertical. You can get this hawk safety. Um, Joe Barry actually does it where he's actually more of a robber set underneath this. So he's on his way to rallying to the flats. He's actually going to take a, what's called a fatter path. And he's going to try to rally under this out route here first and then be up to, for a little flat support. Um, knowing that they're totally cool if you throw this bubble to EQ and you get two, three yards out of it. Um, yeah. This is really stopping this. Um, so the thought process with inside leverage is you should be able to stay on top of the route. Um, that would have to be a perfectly well-timed ball. And we look, we've seen that from Rogers time and time <laughs> yeah. again. Um, but this is not the dude you, you always want to throw that perfectly well-timed ball to, mm -hmm. right? It's usually this cat. So um, if it's not Devante, um, my guess is this one is probably also either chucked down for a very minimal gain here or, um, or, is, or is tossed out of bounds and complete. Yeah. Yeah, so. Be, so Sam, Sam yeah. you're going to the saving vault here. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I watched uh, Coach Vass has some really great oh, yeah. um, breakdowns yeah. on uh, defensive game plans. And he was talking about this where uh, in the game where the Saints shut out the Buccaneers, where basically they had that stubby poach um, yeah. hybrid. And he was talking about how that it's kind of taken over the NFL where teams are kind of putting their best receivers in the two and three spots. Um, so where EQ and MV or uh, EQ and Devonte are in this diagram, and so that allows them to basically get two on ones on those uh, inside receivers. Yeah, yeah, you're kind of stealing a bracket there, and still having the ability to rob if the route combo like this one um, fits into your rules. Yeah, um, this is a good call again, Sam. This is it's going to be tough to move the ball on you, man. That's well done. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it is kind of cool. Is is there any threat from the Hawk to come and, and threaten Devontae to where we would just dump it off? Or do we feel like if he can just beat the nickel, he's probably got the five yards or whatever? Well, well the tough oh, go thing ahead. Is, oh, sorry, Sam. No, it's fine. Playing defense. I'm, I'm verbally railroading you. <laughs> so I had him, I had the nickel misaligned. In this look, he would have outside leverage and he would be playing what's called funnel technique where he's trying to push, you know, if he got a vertical threat from Devante or I see. an in-in threat, he would be pushing it more to the hawk. Um, right. And then he's, he's by alignment doing his best to take that away. Now, obviously, you know, is Chandon Sullivan going to do that all the time against Devante? Probably not, but mm -hmm. is it worth trying to throw through a guy to, to pick up four yards? You know, Rogers is smart enough to be like, he's, he's probably not. Especially if he's, if he's in front of him and underneath, you might just take, take the throw to 19 there is what I'm assuming they would do. Yeah. Unless he just completely killed him on the route or something. I don't know. Which is also possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if we're just going based on, on play calls and everything, I'm guessing 19 is what we're thinking. Yeah. I, I think that's probably where the ball's going. Okay. Um, I would say it's probably a two or three yard gain just because with all the motion that way, the linebackers are probably right. already heading that way. They're rallying to the, where the ball's going. You got Chandon, you've got uh, the safeties. Everyone's kind of rallying to that, that direction. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say second and nine. Um, you know, we sure. picked up one, we dumped it three yards behind the line of scrimmage, but like you said, we have no cutback ability because we have inside pursuit and flow here. You've got already a nickel on top of it, and then this fat rally route from the Hawk is probably going to push it out with a very minimal gain. Mm -hmm. 
well. The other, the other cool thing about that is when I was watching this initially get drawn up, I'm looking at it saying the offensive play call was so perfect because you're almost neutralizing the safeties. I mean, they, they just don't have a job just sitting out there. But just simple things like based on the alignment. Like, if, like I said, if the nickel was not playing inside leverage, that's an easy completion to Devontae. Yeah. I mean, this is such a per- – but just by being in this spot and having, like you said, Han, Coach Han, how he was – how the Hawk safety is crashing. You know, if he's just hanging out there – well, then we might have a shot from 83, but if him, if, if Rogers just sees him running that direction, forget it. I'm not chancing that. And again, with Chandon even not being that good of a player with him being where I want to throw it, well, now I can't do that. Now we got to dump it. So that's just, yeah. that's just kind of blows my mind because it, it seems like the perfect, the perfect call because you're neutralizing people, but just by having guys in the right spot, it kind of just killed the whole play. Yeah, alignment is, 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 is such a big thing. Um, that's why you, you work it every single week. I mean, alignment mm-hmm. is, is one of the tougher things to get high school kids to understand. Um, but by the time that you're in your 12th year of playing football and you're, you know, second or third year in the league, um, hopefully alignment uh, is pretty easy for you. Hopefully. You still <laughs> see guys get misaligned all the time. But Yeah. That's second and nine, Sam, and I've had enough of this. So I'm going to 21 personnel. Oh, okay. Let's go. Uh, um, we're bringing the big horse back in. Um, I really like this guy. I know Elton, um, in my meetings with him, uh, just loves the guy as well. And we're going to go ahead and get into a, a pistol split look here. A um, little shallower alignment from Rogers here with heels at about three. We'll keep him in as Aaron Jones. And then we'll go ahead and get Dylan here. Um, and then we'll put Tay off the line. Um, and we're really going to widen him out. I want to get him off the line again, but now we got to threaten your corner a little bit with him just by his spacing and alignment. So this is my formation here. Um, We don't have any pre-snap motion. Okay, gotcha. So I'm going to switch back into base. Gotcha. And then I'm going to put my buck on the ball, basically. Um, So the corner's one-on-one with Devontae from the pre-snap look. Mm -hmm. Um... And then, yeah, I think, I think I'm ready with my call. All right. Um, if alignment works decently here, knowing it's second and nine, knowing that I have my stud to the field with what looks like a bunch of space, um, this is where I'd give 12, um, and, and we've actually done this in high school, so it's not that outrageous to think that or to know that the Packers do this for sure. I'm going to give 12 the option to easy this. Um, and I know I said no option routes or anything like that, but if he sees pre-snap, you got inside five by one leverage here. You've got your best player working away from a safety who's playing like middle of field where he can't be any fade help. If Rogers likes it, and this is anybody but Jair Alexander, I mean, I'm not even all that threatened by Jalen Ramsey in this look, you know, some of these <laughs> top corners. Um, if he wants it, he can go ahead and easy it on second and nine early in the game and see if he can hit that mandatory outside release fade. Um, but the actual play call that I had was, you know, once again, with my horse in, in the game, um, we're going to do our best to run duo and we will have an orbit disconnect here, but the orbit disconnect is um, naked. So again, Aaron Jones running our orbit disconnect and he doesn't have a job. He's not getting the ball, um, but he is still running our orbit disconnect to the field side, to the Devonte Adams side, making that uh, look post snap a little bit more like a three by one look just to see if I can get your hawk out of the run fit sure yeah so I called cover three week again um so that's basically spinning down the safety away from Mercedes yep um because I'm thinking you know run probably similar to the last call um Mm -hmm. and um honestly I want to stop AJ Dillon and so I'm gonna try to live with the one-on-one coverage outside with Devante. It, like I said, this is a hard offense to prepare for because they can attack you so many different ways. Like you've got the best receiver and the best quarterback in the game. And then you've also got, got to guard AJ Dillon. And so right. this, this snap I'm prioritizing uh, Dillon in that running game. Um, now, if I may interrupt here, this is something that um, you absolutely see early in games where Tay is going to take this and he's going to go with that mandatory outside release fade, and Rodgers will stick with this play call intentionally because he wants Mm -hmm. to see if you're going to fly over the top of that 
and try to outcut it or try to bump and, and run with it or what your what your game plan is. He will absolutely eat only a two yard game gain on second and nine. And I think this is where Packer fans get really frustrated with like slow starts. But what mm-hmm. you're looking to do is, you know, we're going to get in this set later on. Maybe it might not be until the third quarter, but we're going to have another second and long where we can get to a set very similar than this. And if we know that corner is just going to be one-on-one, uh, heck yeah, we'll take that shot later in the game. Yeah. But right now, I mean, you're, we're going to go ahead and double probably your best, your best defensive front seven player here um, in Kenny Clark, which mm-hmm. means we don't really have a good answer for the, and this Campbell cat's been playing hard. I mean, he's been, he's been playing well. He's been very, very patient in a Joe Barry scheme um, reading the way the double team is going to form up. So he might, if Kenny Clark has any ability to get hands on, he might be an unblocked hitman here in the, in the middle for us, which is, it's a good alignment by Sam. He's got his edges taken care of very well here. Um, even though we're not going to block this dude and we technically have six on six, we can't go one-on-one with Kenny Clark. So it's a minimal gain at best, understanding mm-hmm. that Devondre, Devondre Campbell is a pretty good tackler. Yeah, and one advantage with the uh, with buzzing the safety down is um, you should have all the, all the gaps covered. Because usually, if I remember right, Duo has three main gaps that they're trying to attack. Um, and it's kind of like... It's kind of like a zone run where um, the running back has some options as to where he goes. Um, yeah. But we should have all these three gaps. I think that's the – looks like they have the B gap, the weak side A, and then the strong side B as kind of the options here. I mean, he could bounce it outside, but we've got the edges out there. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of got all the gaps covered and hope they can tackle. <laughs> Yeah, um, for the most part, man, when, when you're playing Kenny Clark in here um, and you're going to have him offset at that one tech, I'm not going to ask my guard to scoop him. Um, and that would be the, the free fire up that, that center now up to that play side inside or that Mike backer. But there's no way that's going to happen, just knowing personnel. It looks really good when you draw it up on a chalkboard, but then Kenny Clark comes and ruins the day for you. So yeah. we definitely got to double that cat. Um, we have an unblocked hit man now. Um, you did a nice job making sure all your gaps are covered by spinning safeties, as you said. Again, this is a play that we're probably going to eat, knowing that we're coming back in, you know, late in the second or in the third, and we're going to take that one-on-one um, vert shot to to right. eventually. So, so yeah. man, you got me again. Let's say it's third and long. Let's say it's third and seven. Okay. So I am now going um, – I've had enough of not being able to run the ball either. I'm getting 11 personnel, so we're going to get A.J. Dillon out of the game. We're going to go ahead and bring MVS back in. And one second here. This is the one bad thing about huddle is just very cumbersome at times. To Yeah. Do. So we're going back to our nub set here and we're going to nub to the field. So we're going to put MVS on the line once more. Again, the whole thought is trying to get Devante aligned somewhat over your nickel and waste your corner on MVS. And I hate to say waste because he, I do, I really think he's a, a pretty darn good receiver, regardless of what the fan base can say at times. But yeah. We're going to go ahead and be in this look, a trio look to the field. Okay. Third and seven. Okay. So I'm going to go into dime since I'm not super afraid of the, the running game in this situation. Are you going to pull out oh. your Sam, your Mike, or your Will for dime? I'm going to pull out my Sam. Gotcha. And Keep then, Devondre in there. Gotcha. My guess is you're going to kind of boss this look, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and let me know where you want everybody else aligned. Yeah, so – I'm sorry. Did you say it was, it was a motion or no? No motion. No. Nope. Okay. Nope, we're going static here. I'm go- okay, so I'm going to align uh, like, like it's man coverage, so I'm basically going to get my dime backer on um, Mercedes in this case. Um, my mic's going to be on the running back, and then my corner, my other outside corner is probably going to be on Devontae. Um, it's not, I mean, in, in this situation, it's probably going to be Rasul, so it's not super great from the slot. I, I think he's better as an outside corner, but I so think you he probably has. you want to this? You want to bring corner over? Gotcha. Yeah. So we'll get him out of there. Very good. Mm-hmm. And then and you want, I'm sorry. Did you say you wanted your nickel man to man on Sadie's? No, I, I wanted my uh, dime gotcha. on Mercedes. Gotcha. So gotcha. it'd probably be Henry Black, Vernon Scott, Kevin King, gotcha. one of those three. Um, body there. Gotcha. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, I think I'm ready with my call. Fantastic. Are your safeties aligned the way you want them or you want to move a little? Um, maybe bump the Hawk out a little bit more and, uh, yeah, the backside okay. safety out a little bit more as well. Gotcha. All right. Uh, we're not going to roll this. We're going to six man protect it here. So we're going to man slide this thing to the low shade here so that we can get ourselves a nice double with eyes up to a looping Mike backer. Should we get it? And then we'll go ahead and make our bubble here and here, and then we'll fit Aaron Jones right in here. He can always chip release, but, um, I'm not going to do that. Right now, we'll go ahead and keep him static. And then we're going to run our snag concept, but we're going to call it snag to the sticks. So that's going to be our seven yard snag. We're going to drive to the inside leverage here of that corner that Rasul Douglas or whoever it may be. And then we're going to go ahead and take this sucker outside. And then we're going to, instead of a bubble now, we're going to run kind of a speed out here um, with Alan Lazard understanding that if we get all this this action here we should be able to turn that into a wheel and then we're going to seam this sucker just to hopefully hold that backside free mm -hmm. yeah so i call cover run double 17 again um like i said basically covering Devonte is the priority on passing downs for me um so probably that that's uh number two corner is probably playing with outside leverage closer to the line the hawk is playing with uh inside leverage um with depth and then the uh, – I forget what you call it, the F safety? The fr we just call him the free or backside. Free. Or, okay. Or, yeah, so we got yeah, the free so and Hawk. And I only do that because it's really hard to make dollar signs on huddle. Usually that would be your strong <laughs> yeah. safety, right? But it's hard mm -hmm. to make a dollar sign on huddle, so I just yeah. – I, I call it the Hawk. Yeah, and so the, um, the free safety is going to take the uh, middle of field post. And so I'm actually feeling pretty good about this because with bracketing Devante, we should have that corner route covered. We have the deep route for Mercedes basically on a two on one. And even if it wasn't, I kind of, if it's like Kevin King out there, I, I feel pretty good about that on Mercedes. Who's not, I, I like him, but he's not a super dynamic receiving threat. Right. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. So probably, oh, and the Mike backer, I'm probably coaching him to add on to the rush. Uh, as he sees the running back pass protect. So he's going to basically come with a five-man pressure. Yeah, just um, fit as you see back fit. Yeah, pretty much. I think they call that – I don't know if I have the terminology right, but I think a lot of people call that a green dog pressure, where it's basically, like I said, adding on. They see yep. the running back pass protect. Yeah, you've got, you've got the green light when he steps up into the bubble or whatever that is. Yeah, um, green dog, I've also heard it called, you know, from the edges, you get that blitz peel look. Um, right, so, right. Uh, yeah, so you're on it there. Um, my, one, <laughs> my one little uh, sticking point here, so we'll, we'll have to defer to Rye, is this is something that the Packers do on third down all the time, and it drives other teams' fan bases absolutely bonkers. It drives them nuts, but this is your natural pick play, right? So with our spacing here from MVS, he's going to sit as this corner starts to chase. And it's going to cause a little bit of interference. Now, he's not going to he's not going to be the one who initiates contact. But um, this is, you know, the stuff that Lafleur was doing way back when. And now Hackett is really picking up on it where MVS is turning with hands up, you know, getting into Rogers. You know, I, I've got the snag on the sticks, but he's not getting the ball. I mean, we, we all know he's not. The whole thought there is. Tay is going to run this thing skinny enough off of MVS that there should be some natural interference that will open yeah. him up. You know, he's got the leverage to the outside um, with that Hawk playing inside leverage. So I'm actually really thankful um, that you bumped your other corner to outside leverage. <laughs> thinking if we can get this pick, this could be a, a, a big time play. You see this, um, the Packers run it in the low red zone all the time. Some interference routes like this. So this is kind of a 50, 50 one to me, Sam, where, if we can get this pick and, and we can get a little bit of interference to where it doesn't have to be much, it doesn't even have to be contact, but get this corner in a trail position um, with the athleticism of Devante, you could be in a world of hurt. The flip side mm -hmm. of that is if your spacing is wrong or if you do get jammed off the line, you know, something like that to where the timing's off, um, this plays dead in the water. So mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a tough one, man. This is great coverage. This is a 50-50 here. Yeah, and I will throw in that Stokes, he tends to play up closer to the line a bit more, so that might mess with the, the spacing timing. Could, could mess with some spacing and timing here, um, absolutely. MVS has gotten better, you know, mm -hmm. at getting off of the line. He's run a lot more slice-type stuff like this as opposed to up and out where there's an actual cut. 
where he'll actually angle the hips right off the line. Um, so, Rye, uh, we're, we're going to the referee here. Is the corner route to Devante in this look, given both of our arguments, is this complete or are we punting here? So, if the play works as you designed it, Brian, what we're saying is Devante and Rodgers versus, what, Darnell Savage chasing them down the field? Probably Savage, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the hard part is, did it work? You know, exactly. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. you know, it's, it's, <laughs> did he get in the way or, mm-hmm. or not? And, you know, because if, if you're talking, like you said, Stokes and Savage, I mean, obviously you got some, I mean, they, they make mistakes, but if we're talking two guys, they both got speed. They're not getting burned by Devante. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's Savage screaming down the field and maybe 40% of the time the defense wins, it's just, it's really tough. I'll tell you what I, I will say, and I'm, I'm, I will make a decision at some point, but I want to do this again because I think this is a lot of fun, and I think it would be fun if we did it live and we mm-hmm. added a voting component. Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah, that'd really be a lot cool. of fun. I like that. I like that. And yeah, it would take I'm the pressure off of me as sure. much as I thought I would like it. I feel like <laughs> this is – I'm – you know, I don't know. But, that, I mean, that, that, that really is what it comes down to. If the play worked, I think Devontae is going to hit it. If, if they didn't get in the way and it's doubled up, I don't think it worked. So, I – yeah. All right, what are we talking about? So, so we got MVS trying to get in the way of. Are we saying that's Rasul? That's Rasul. Mm-hmm. I'm. And, gonna, and so, I'm gonna, are, are they? Do they oh, press ahead. in this defense? Is, is he? Is MVS going to get pressed on the line at all? I'm probably no? gonna since Stokes is playing in a press position. I'm probably gonna have Rasul playing off just to okay. like, uh, avoid a uh, uh, possible bump or not bump um, a rub route like that. I hate to be biased towards Brian here, but I feel like if he's not pressed, he's going to have the ability to fly to where he needs to go mm-hmm. and to get in the way. So I'm going to say it's Devonte, and it's a nice place ball, and it gets there before Savage is able to get there and they hit the play. Yeah, I wanted Savage... to go in your favor, Sam. I wanted to, <laughs> to do one each, but I just feel like if the play works, I mm-hmm. can't take Savage beats Rodgers and Devonte. I can't. Yeah, Savage away. has had some trouble the past yeah. couple of weeks, so I can understand that. That's, that's my Brad. call. Brad. So we got a first down there then, okay. fellas. Thank you, referee. Um, we're moving, but I'm nervous now, to be honest <laughs> with you, because knowing um, Sam's propensity to stay two-on-one over Devontae, um, that, that's making things kind of tough for me right now. I was kind of hoping eventually I could just hit a one-on-one against him and, and you know, go score. But um, that'll <laughs> all be for later on in the game. What I am going to tell you right now, though, is I am coming out now right after that. Let's just say we're middle of the field getting or whatever, um, wherever we hit it, maybe right hash. I am coming out now in empty personnel. I'm coming out okay. number one. Um, we're going to keep – this will be De- – what number is DeGuara? 81, I think. 81, fantastic. Um, we're, going to keep, we're going to put him out there just for a little bit more of a passing threat now. And um, we're going to get into an empty look here where I want to see your adjustments to four by one, even if it's um, nothing special and we end up running our running back, motioning our running back back in. I want to see what your adjustment would be to that because I might come back and go four by one out of a a true zero look. And then I might put him on the other side of it at some point in time, just to see how dedicated you are to bracketing him, you know? Right, right. He's got to be on the line now. Otherwise, I'm cheating. Gotcha. So, Devontae's singled up as the – Yeah, yep. so we're going to say okay. right now we got four by one and empty uh, personnel, empty look. Um, we've got four by one right now away from Devontae just to see, again, how dedicated you are to, to his bracket. Right. So, I'm going to probably come out in nickel personnel because if I see one tight end and a running back coming out, I'm thinking it could be a run. So, I want to be prepared for that. Um, yep. and then, go ahead and align me here. I'm going to have to move yeah. you guys around on my screen to go grab my corner again <laughs> for your corner. All right, go ahead and yes. align me to this. Okay. So, I'm going to stick in the two, si- two high safety look. Um, I'm going to have my corner on Devontae playing not, – not playing press, but playing a little bit off the line probably with outside leverage. Okay. Um, I'm going to – I'm going to keep it kind of a zone look, um, but I'm going to bump the coverage over onto the four-by-one side. 
Very good. Um, so the corner's going to stay on Aaron Jones. Um, the nickel's going to bump over to MVS. And then, um, I don't know, I probably, yeah, I have the Sam out there, though. I might, I might put Devondre out there um, just because I like him better, uh, obviously, in passing situations. So you want to kind of almost boss this this way, knowing that you probably don't have a running threat per se? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And then I have my call whenever you're ready. Very good. Um, seeing this alignment is, is pretty, I don't know how slick it is, but um, also understanding that you haven't really brought pressure yet. I mean, we did see a, a, a green dog, um, as you mm -hmm. called it, um, from the mic, but understanding you haven't really wanted to blitz. You, you, you've played some solid coverage um, and played your, your numbers in the box pretty well. I'm probably not throwing this screen then. Um, so initially, if, if I'm thinking that you're coming in an empty look here and I can see this sort of stuff where now all of a sudden you got more dudes coming than we can protect, uh, we can very easily quick screen this sucker out here knowing that we have the numbers. But if we're not getting that look and I'm seeing that all these guys are staying at depth, we're going to go ahead and call that screen off and we'll just motion Aaron Jones back in. Now I also know... Um, kind of your thought on, on what you'd like to do with Devante here. So as I motion Aaron Jones back in, just to get that look from you for empty, how, how do you adjust that? Just bump again? Yeah, just bump um, back into the center of the formation a little more. So the nickel in the corner, basically man aligned on the strong side. Gotcha. So something like that then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what we're going to do here is just run cut protection. We're going to just make sure that these hands can't get up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, Attack the thigh boards and then just stay strong on the back side here and here. And then we're just going to run a little scissors switch concept here to here. Um, knowing that they're not going to get the ball, but we're really just trying to hold that backside safety from any sort of pursuit. And then we're just going to do everything we can to take care of that window. We really mm -hmm. like that window we have, especially with him way outside. So the reason we form the reason we motion Aaron Jones back in this way. Um, for late edge protection, but really it's to get him out of that throwing lane. Um, right. That's why we run cut protection here, keep those hands down out of that slant window and see if we can get a cheap one to our best player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my call was cover run cross. So basically it's cover one where the weak side safety is dropping down into our robber zone. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that call because that takes care of that slant window. Um, and I'm probably coaching them to have eyes on Devante anyway. So it's kind of a, a double team, but not really a double team. Um, no, it's just kind of. No, it's, this, is, this is good. When you yeah. were in the two high set, I was very excited that you were giving me a layup. But <laughs> um, any other quarterback aside from Aaron Rodgers throws a pick and probably a pick six here. Um, that's a good yeah. rob. That's a great rob from you, especially if he's not coming from a ton of depth. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good rob. You know, yeah. you, you see this from time to time where. Uh, a defense will kind of trick Rodgers like you just tricked me here and baited me into throwing that slant window um and Rodgers will just tuck it and eat the sack or whatever but um this is good Sam that yeah. Ryan I lost that one I lost that <laughs> one so then um if I'm not mistaken then Sam just so I can have an idea for um later on you're gonna roll that to single and you're gonna roll this here and then mm -hmm. eventually you know knowing this that I might end up with a little bit of an inside run here on that switch later on in the game, knowing that this has to be our post safety because he's going down here. Is that correct? You're playing some, some yeah. one switch on that. You're going to switch those routes. On mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now I guess if, I guess if Aaron Jones stays into pass protect, one of my linebackers might just go into a rat zone where he also kind of protects against under routes. Um, but yeah. No, that's good. Um, I definitely, definitely ate a sack there. Um, if not, throw a pick. Now, we know Rodgers doesn't always throw those picks. He actually did. This is a, a concept that I stole from him last year um, where he threw, almost threw a pick. It was dropped against uh, the Buccaneers. So, um, that's good stuff, Sam. Yeah, that's well done. I thought I had a layup, and um, I ate some yardage instead from it for sure, um, if not a pick. So, nice work, man. Yeah, thanks. Now we got we had second and long once again. I'm going to stay in the same personnel group where it's um, 11 personnel, um, but we aren't going to um, – we're not going to align into empty anymore. And then I just want to see, knowing that you're playing a lot of off zone 
Um, I'm going to see how I can attack just one more part of the field. And then I would probably say um, just for time wise and recording wise that this would probably kind of be our last, our last stab of it, where if, if we don't sure. score here, it might be, it might be blouses. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm going to stay in, uh, I think I'm going to stay in nickel. Um, protect against the run a little bit there because I anticipate them trying to get some yardage back for third down. Um, I'm going to move the nickel over to the passing strength, so over um, Lazard. Um, My guess is you're going to be like this, and this might even be a, an on-the-line type of look here with your will. Yeah. That's up to you. Well, I'm in, I'm in uh, nickel, so I should have – is that – how many players on the field is that? You got uh, eleven here, so we we okay. the buck linebacker off in favor right. of nickel. Okay, okay, I gotcha. Um, just got confused for a minute, so I'm gonna put this corners a little bit closer to the line. Keep a too too high safety look. The corners are gonna be playing with outside leverage. Um, and then I might go ahead and play. Um, Let's see, with the defensive line, I'm going to play another over front. Um, How are you, the, are you getting your strength to displaced receivers or to the back? To, uh, to the back. So the, um, the one technique would be on the same side as the line, uh, running back. Gotcha. So I want to, like I said, protect against that inside zone because I'm thinking in shotgun, that's typically what the kind of play that they run. Sure. Um, especially with the – tight end kind of on the on the same side as the running back they like to run adding that weak side zone there. yep and kind of a king look adding the gap yep mm -hmm. okay i am ready with the call i think awesome so what we're gonna do here protection wise is what we call pinch protection where we're gonna go ahead and get the doubles as much as we can towards the interior and we are gonna go ahead and single up that end we'll have air it, it it's essentially a full slide but with the center breaking the rules um, just to get the double on the nose. And then we're going to have Aaron Jones protect the edge, um, kind of that back on backers look. Um, and I know <laughs> most of those in the Packernet kingdom are saying, Han, you're not running the ball. You're breaking your own rules. What are you doing? <laughs> um, but we're going to try to get yardage back, knowing that you kind of like a little bit of man and then a little bit of soft zone. So I think you kind of already get my gist here, Sam, that we're going to just run a, a mesh technique and we're going to mm. read – corner um, at the snap to front side safety here. So the progression will go here to here um, and they will tell us what to do. If this corner passes this off um, and stays with the wheel route, we know we, we kind of like that. Um, if this hawk jumps at all on any of our mesh stuff, um, then we're gonna take our one-on-one -on -one shot with Tay. Um, but yeah. again, you spin really well and, and you're, <laughs> you're pretty good coverage wise. So that's what we're looking at here. Okay, so I called uh, cover two, or the what they, I think they call it cut in this system. Um, yeah. Or basically, it's a it's a match version Pattern of match cover two. two. Yep. So yep. that should take care of the mesh, then. You know, if you're passing mm -hmm. it off correctly. Yep. Yeah. And then I also called a um, some games up on the defensive line, so I'm gonna crash my nose tackle. I might, in this case, I might align him a little bit more over the center, so he can kind of crash towards the running back, and then I'm gonna bring my end over into um, that other A gap, opposite so A gap. So you're long sticking him, huh? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I like that. <laughs> well, that's um, – so for all, all of you um, fans or anybody who might be looking at this, this is a really good call um, to eat up inside zone um, and to eat up duo, getting guys moving on the line. It's also a, a pretty nice play call against this, and it just happened to be this kind of more of a run stunt that Sam's running. Um, but this is a, a, a really – he kind of walked into a really nice stunt here as well because mesh usually takes some time to develop. You know, mm -hmm. you're asking a couple of cats here in MBS and Lazard to go over the middle where they're going to be rerouted by some inside backers and, you know, waiting for these windows, especially now against a cover two look, um, it, it might take a while to develop. So if my line can communicate, if my line can pick it up, I will let you know that we got a, a, a pretty sexy look here. Yeah. You know, knowing that that corner is going to stay put because he's going to have his flat threatened by mesh coming across and he's going to hear um, in, in, in or, or, or cut or whatever it is coming from that nickel, that communication coming. Um, he's going to have to kind of hold on that mesh a little bit as he carries with Tay. Um, this is a pretty good look. The question is, 
are we going to be able to get that off? You know, are we going to be able to protect long enough for Tay to take that inside stem, hold that hawk, and then bend back out? That's, again, um, a long developing play. And with the games you got going up front, when we have probably, you know, the, the most injuries you've seen on an offensive line for a while, um, this is this is risky, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Josiah DeGuara here on the backside, taken up by the free and, and a cover two look and a pattern match two. That's not a big deal. This should be a real easy read for that free if he's reading number two vertical and out you know he gets an out stem from him so he's going to stay on the top of that vertical I don't think that's an issue at all um, I think the corner can pass pass and hold I think the nickel playing his you know hook zone here and the corner here can pass pass and hold so I don't think we have anything here the question just comes down to Rye guy are we able to protect against a defensive line that's twisting um, with our battered offensive line yeah and my only regret I wish I had run the stunt to Royce uh, Newman's side, where basically I have the nose crashing to the um, opposite A, a gap. gap. Yeah, yeah, and then bring the, the end over to that um, B gap. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. But either way, I mean, I think you did it the right way initially to stop a run threat. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking it's third and – or second and 14 here, they're going to try to get to third and manageable. Um, Packers on, on second and long um, like to – for the most part, take some shots. And seeing mm -hmm. that you haven't brought a ton of inside backer pressure, I also didn't want to run a screen just yet. So, Ryan, uh, do, are we able to pick up the stunt, or is this battered offensive line um, going to give up another sack here? My one question is, what is Aaron Jones doing? I know he's initially going off to the right side, but with that being vacated, is he going to turn around and come back and try to pick up the stunt? or? Well, that, that, that's a good question. Uh, my question is, is this Will coming off of the seat? Well, actually, the D-gap here, Sam, or is he floating into this hook curl zone up here as well? He's coming. So I'm just going right. to keep it a four-man okay. rush and yeah. Uh, then, yeah, bring those guys. Then Aaron so Jones got, is occupied. So we've got our right tackle just standing there by himself in no man's land with nothing to do. Exactly. Yeah, pretty right. much. Anytime gotcha. you can waste an offensive lineman, you've done a good job on the D-line. I, I hate to just say random stuff, but <laughs> I, I can certainly picture, if nothing else, because it's not the easiest throw in the world with pressure in your face off your back foot, trying to, trying to make that complete that pass. Um, I I hate to not give it to him, but no, I'm agreeing with you here. You, you, you can, you can easily see just, just missing them. You know what I mean? It's not so much mm -hmm. a coverage thing. It's a pressure thing. Yeah. Um, you know, when somebody's screaming in your face, trying to get that, you know, over in the corner, We've seen it plenty of times where, where he just misses. We saw it last week. He just missed Devontae by a handful. Right. Um, you know, they're, it's a good pairing, but they're not perfect. And I can see if you call the right play as far as pressure, um, I mean, if this was a five-yard out, it's a completion. But this is, this is a much more difficult throw. And there is going to be somebody in the, somewhere in the vicinity. So he can't just lob it up and, you know, Devontae just stands there and waits for it to yeah. come to him. He's still got to throw a good ball. Mm -hmm. Totally. That hawk is going to be screaming over. Oh, I'm, 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 mm -hmm. Right. The so second that I'll, he's I'll, I'll, in, in, in from his number two, he's going to float up because now he's yep. man on number one. So you got to you got to throw it into that that deep hole, which is a tough throw to make. Right. Yeah. As Sam is saying here, you know, with his coverage, so he's done a really nice job of of getting pressure with four, meaning that he can hold seven in coverage. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, I think this is incomplete at best, man. Yeah, I think this is one of those Rogers hands on his hips, shaking his head, going, "Man, I had him. He was right there. I had him. I just missed him." Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what I think we're dealing with on this one. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good play call against the coverage here. Um, unfortunately, that the, the nice little twist that Sam engineered on the line, um, we're gonna have we're gonna have difficulties with, and this is what the fans just screaming because you know Tay <laughs> is gonna be here, this yep. hawk is gonna be here. You're gonna see a touchdown if, if Rogers can hit him, but they don't understand how how difficult it yeah. is to hit that, you know. <laughs> right. Now that's well done, Sam. We got third and long, man. Yeah, thanks. Son of a gun. All right. <laughs> well, I wasn't ready for third and long. I, I figured I'd get a couple of second and long, so you're pretty sharp, but uh third and long. I wasn't exactly ready for, so I will let you know that um, we're going to stay in 11 personnel, and we're going to stay okay. with this personnel, um, so no offense, but you can't sub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not, I'm not, not a huge deal to me. I've already got my nickel out there, so that's kind of the main concern. That um, doesn't help. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and stack now. Um, see how you like to play some stack stuff. Um, 
and then we're gonna do this one out of pistol like this and okay. um field is to the offense is left so we can kind of move this you know where it was or right. whatever um offense is left um but not by much you know it's more middle of field field to the left right part. Okay, so and one one thing I'm gonna do with my front, I'm gonna load it. I'm gonna put it in a boss, um, okay. so it's overloaded to one side. Um, yeah. I'll probably do the offense is left. Um, okay. So basically, the um, outside edge rusher edge rusher is like at a wide nine technique. Okay. The um, end, your, your backside end now comes out to strong wide nine. Well, w what I'm thinking here is I'm not I'm not sure kind of how you were how you how are you thinking about it but um basically having my edge players outside so Rashawn and Preston gotcha um yep. so probably Rashawn over on that in that wheel position um Preston over in that end yeah and then I'm gonna have Kenny Clark uh, at a three technique and then yep. I'm gonna have the tackle probably Dean Lowry or Kingsley Keekley at like a one technique okay so you're going here with it no no uh the other side other one side technique so you want to go side. here and then Kenny Clark at a three here no, I'm loading the offensive left. Oh, man, you're doing line. this to me? Yeah. Oh, so you're killing all my gaps. And what <laughs> he's doing here, Ryan, is he's dictating what I can do with my pass pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's so basically cool they, have to, they have to slide to the left because you can't, you can't just slide right. to one guy. Um, they have to slide to the left, and so might we play some games this. with that. Yep, you can't that's, leave this guard um, as part of uh, – like if I did go man slide here, and I would, I would probably – I would go man slide here, but I do have to have this guard slide here because we have to do we do have the propensity to cross face here with a Dean Lowry or somebody mm -hmm. like that, and you don't want Aaron Jones taking that bubble. So this is this is good, Sam. It's <laughs> very cool too because anybody that's familiar with some of the videos you've done for us, Coach, um, you've done stuff on this. You've made videos about how you can mm -hmm. dictate to the offense, who normally is dictating to the defense. But if you bring too many guys, you don't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. How do you watch your secondary align, buddy? I'm going to go pretty neutral alignment. So I'm going to have the corners outside of the bunches. Um, I'm probably going to have the nickel over to the Devante side um, with inside leverage. Then I'm going to go with the um, – I'm actually going to put the mic, which in, in my mind is Devondre, over stretched out to the um, other side to – yeah, that side. Like an apex here and then just keep yeah. him inside? Gotcha. I'm actually going to mug him over the guard, the right Why guard. Why did you do this to me, man? That's good. That's good. Um, That's some zero yeah. stuff right there, buddy. <laughs> okay. And then – so that – would, would you go into man protection with that if I uh -huh. have the backer over there? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We're going to go um, full man – here um we are man protection and now we have to go back on backer which again now ryan he's told me what i can do with my running back so that sucks <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think so this is third and i don't know we also 14 yeah, something probably like that 14 yet yeah this is long okay yeah i think i'm ready with my call all right well my guess is um I'm a little conflicted here, guys, because I know what I would love to do, but I also know what the Packers are, are probably doing here, you know. Um, third and 14, knowing that you're, you're – or at least thinking you're going to get some pressure and some overload pressure and stuff like that. Um, Green Bay doesn't love to take that shot for the sticks. You know what I mean? Um, they like to throw it at, at six, seven yards and – uh, see if you can make something of it. And then in the first half, they're perfectly happy just punting it. So we're going to get an MOR here that's almost going to look like a wheel, the way that that corner is aligned. But Lazard's got to get outside of that corner, um, regardless of what that is. And then we're going to do our little shake um, pattern again with almost like a whip with Devante, reading this hawk safety, um, letting us know where that ball is going to go. And then we're going to just divide and post here and then obviously protection wise sam has already told us what we can do so um we don't have a lot of options there um this is really really good stuff here now traditionally um you try to go back on backer with this so we can get some help here with the guard knowing that you're, that you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with this right tackle the scary thing is you got a right tackle um and a pretty elite edge rusher here so you may not have all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I called, I just called pretty much quarters coverage, nothing, nothing special about that I just want to protect protect deep and rally to the ball. Um, up front, I'm going to drop my sandbacker out to the uh, middle zone, and then I'm going to bring a stunt where the tackle is crashing across into the B gap on the offensive left, and then the, the nose tackle is going to crash into the um, other side. You're coming. Oh, you're going to yeah, yeah. twist it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, the, the nose tackle is going to come across into the A gap. So I'm basically, I'm going to challenge Royce Freeman. He's going to have to recognize the sandbacker dropping out and phase off against Kenny Clark coming with momentum on the inside. Yeah, that's tough. Um, that's going to that's gonna put him in a pretty tough spot. The, the kind of nice thing about it here is the second that uh, the running back, who is, is well coached, the second that he sees that mug peel off from that Sam, um, he can be a little bit of inside help then. Um, mm -hmm. So you have... Yeah. We do have a little bit more of a free. And then obviously this guard is, it looks like he's quote unquote uncovered, but when he has no work, he can go ahead and back pocket as well. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this poor right tackle is never going to know that he's back pocketing. And you got to just hope that this elite rusher doesn't beat him around the hoop and yeah. spins inside or takes that free B gap. But Rye, by, by dropping this, this mugged Sam back, or what he's done is take away the slicer out away from me now. Um, that was hopefully going to be the, the catch and run. But now you're playing quarters here, Sam. So my guess is you're reading 13 as one is 17 as two. Um, yeah. So the Hawk, is as he sees the out by 17, you're going to rally to that. The nickel will have some late help to it as well. Mm -hmm. the, the whip route there, the little shake whip, um, that will be open. But again, yep. we're running that sucker at four yards, guys. Um, the corner is going to read an outside and up release by number one. So he's going to stay on top of Lazard. This will be open, but um, as we see from the Packers very often that, that um, makes people angry is it's going to be a, a seven-yard open on third and 14, and now mm -hmm. you're just relying on, on athletes trying to do something in space, and you're going to have a dude on a hip and then a dude rallying to it. So my guess is, buddy, uh, we're, we're probably not picking up this first down. Um, we can wait and wait and wait and you know pray the offensive line gives us all sorts of time for this post to eventually cross a face, but – that's not happening. The slice route eventually running could, could, I mean, if you have, mm -hmm. the problem is it's Josiah DeGuara. It's not, you know, a, a yeah. speedy dude, but you know, that may open up, but again, we're not going to have time for that guys. Not with, not with the motion up front. So is the, the safety is going to be kind of coming down to help with Devonte, presumably? He's going to go over kind of to the outside sideline. Yeah. With the, um, uh, with, with that, with that whip route, he's going to come over and probably help with that. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm, I'm just I thinking um, the way that Sam is, is talking about quarters correctly, this is going to be like a match four where the mm. Hawk is reading the number two as he starts to get that in um, on the whip route here from Devante. When he starts to see that stutter in, he can start to crash a little bit and then tail off over the top, knowing he has under help, underneath help from the nickel, who in this case is your flats defender. Is that accurate, Sam? I'm just thinking. In, uh, yeah, pretty much. I don't, I don't necessarily think it would, be a beat or anything but in my mind if there's enough time i think rogers would throw a 50 50 to lazard down if if, if that is a one-on-one -on -one, i could see him trying that yeah, i think i do think that's what he would try to do i'm not giving you a touchdown on it or anything i'm just saying in my mind if i'm picturing that rogers wants to get the first down i know they do go short of the sticks but like you said if we're talking four yards compared to he's not going to get that Devontae's not picking yeah. that up especially with the safety coming I think he would throw 50 50 to Lazard on that mm -hmm. he certainly might the tough thing about um especially the way that Sam is running quarters is again you know they're they're in a bail technique here and they're reading the number one receiver this corner is in a bail technique you know he's got no reason to ever come up and fall step so he can okay. stay real patient you know way up on top of this route it will be sure. a true 50 50 ball Okay. Um, but with a little bit of inside leverage here, you're also squeezing to the sidelines. So he's probably not going to get the... that extra defender. You, you turn a 50, yeah. 50 into more like a, you know, 30, 70 or right. something like that. Yeah. Um, they do take that shot. They take the shot all the time, especially early in the game, just to test corners out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you, you can't say, yeah, you're getting the first down immediately, right. you know, right. um, or, or anything like that. I've seen it happen a lot where they just take the whip, you know, take the layup, uh, 
put themselves in a little better position for a punt team, you know, something like that early in the game. Later in the game, my guess is Rodgers is going to go ahead and work some magic here to the weak side away from the, the stunt, set up kind of inside tackle box here if he has the ability to mm-hmm. stay moved. Um, and then he usually would wait for that slice route to open up yeah. uh, as opposed to taking that as this safety bails. I mean, that's a pretty nice window to throw into, and you're not really against your body there. Um, but early in the game, I don't know. I, he may take the 50-50 ball. He might just throw a layup. It's, it's really hard to say on this. This is, this is pretty well defended. I wish All I could right. just say I have an offensive line that we can five-man protect on. <laughs> and now I'm throwing wheel routes to my running back. But unfortunately, yeah. right now for Green Bay, I don't think that's the case, man. So, yeah, I mean, I would, I would Sam, um, I would call this a draw. I think this was, you know, a, a ton of fun. I think the offense moved yeah. the ball a little bit, but you also had some, some really nice coverages and some really frustrating stuff up front. <laughs> um, Ryan, you can see kind of uh, defensively when you just do different things with alignments, you know, again, you're only bringing four here, but you're putting us in a tough position on the offensive line, a lot of man on and a lot of movement type of stuff. Um, you can see how, how complicated this can get uh, uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, remind me to never play you guys in Madden. All right. <laughs> like Dude, I am a terrible Madden player. Like I used to be good. Um, yeah. and, and now my son just wipes the floor with me. Man. <laughs> he can like, liter- like, like I- usering an inside backer and like playing robber and stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm done. <laughs> I'm literally just button smashing when I play that. Like, dude, I love this play. Yeah. I'm going to try that one. <laughs> Guys, this has been a blast. Uh, this has yeah. been just, just so much fun. Thank you much, Ryan. I love the idea of doing it live once. Um, get some fan voting in there. Get some fan yeah. input. Hopefully get some fans chirping us, you know, like, oh, bring Frank, you know what I mean? Kind of get that. Right. No, no, like, no, I yeah. agree because that's oh, – that, that somebody. Is, that Why is part of it, too. Off? And, and, it, and it could even bring up some, you know, as, as questions arise or as somebody's screaming, like, why doesn't he do this? I can ask you live, you know, yeah. why aren't you bringing any pressure? Why aren't you, do, why aren't you covering this guy or – why don't you try going throw into the running backs, Brian? Why aren't you? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I sure. no, I think I, I I didn't want to do it live on the first one just because I didn't know exactly how it would go. But I thought this was very cool. I think people like this a lot. And I, if you yeah. guys want to do it again, I'd love to do it live next time and just see how that goes. Yeah, it was a yeah, ton of fun. Nice. All right, fellas, right, boys, I'll well, just kind of trim down and um, get this over to you guys. Um, and obviously, you know, do what you want with it. And let's schedule a time to do this live. And, and Sam, this was, I mean, you're good, man. You're really good. Are you coaching <laughs> nice. anywhere? No, I'm not. Um, Bro, yeah, I, I haven't really looked into that much. Um, if I just, you know, chirping from the stands here, from, from the peanut gallery, um, you should really consider it because you're good. You definitely have the, the scheme and the knowledge down. So if that's ever anything that's, even slightly crossed your mind, um, I would encourage you to at least explore that. Yeah, thanks, man. You bet. Rye, always fun. Sam, to, nice to quasi meet you. Um, <laughs> fellas, I'll get this chopped up and over to you guys, and um, hopefully we get to watch some of this stuff live a little later on tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and are you guys okay if I share this over at Wisconsin Sports World? 100%, yeah, whatever oh, you yeah. need. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah you bet. All right, guys, enjoy the day. Um, yeah. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Enjoy watching the Packers tonight, and um, we'll catch you later. All right, Sounds guys. Good. Have a good night. Great to talk. Yep. Yeah.